Okay, so again, we're gonna look at energy transfer systems and how energy goes from one thing to another. Um, we started doing this in the uh, skate park physics last week, um, where kinetic was turning into potential and then you were always losing some, it seemed to, uh, to dissipated, right? To that thermal dissipated. Um, I am gonna stop my video again though, as I do these just to try to squeak out a little more bandwidth for everybody. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, this is one form of energy going to another. We had the diagram, you know all the different types now, um, but it changes and you know it changes. So let's, uh, let's get those in. Um, what types of energy are present before you light a match? Well, when you light a match, um, the fire is stored, the, the stuff that makes that energy available is stored chemical. It's a type of potential. So before the match was lit, it was, uh, it was potential chemical. Um, that's what happens in chemical reactions. That's, that's where it is. And then the friction, you, you add kinetic energy to it and that friction uh, hits something called an activation energy amount and then it starts burning. Um, you know, while it's burning, I mean, what's there? There's heat energy given off, there's light energy, electromagnetic, right? That was from that electromagnetic because you can see it. Um, and those are the two big ones really there. But keep in mind, energy never really disappears. It changes form. So that's what's happening in these. And I think everybody knows that, but it's one of the main, one of the main principal kind of tenant pillars of science is this conservation of energy. What is the thing right here? And that law of conservation of energy, it always states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just changes forms. And that's what we're gonna look at. It just changes forms. And again, you know this because of the skate park. We worked on this from the energy skate park. That energy just changed, it didn't it didn't just disappear, it just turned into some other stuff. Um, and that is kind of one of the th big things here. Now, when you have a pendulum moving back and forth, uh, this thing's swinging back and forth, back and forth, right? Um, all right, so let's say we've got a pendulum moving back and forth, right? It goes from there to there to there. And, you know, the potential energy, it's kind of like that skate park, right? You have um, mostly, it's all potential energy up here. It's all potential energy up there, right? when it's at its highest point, just like the skateboarder. But then when you get down to this bottom part, there it's all kinetic energy. Okay, right there, it's all kinetic energy. It's as low as it can go, so it has no more height and it's moving as fast as it can. Um, the combination of kinetic and potential is called mechanical energy uh, the, or total energy. Um, the the uh, bar on the energy skate park thing, I wanted blue. The bar on the energy skate park thing wanted total energy. That's what it said, mechanical energy, total energy. Um, it's really, really the same thing in that. Uh, the formulas on the next page, you worked with these or you're gonna work with them um, very soon. So, um, 
the potential. We already went through that. It's mass gravity height. The kinetic is one uh, half. Wait, wait, I'm not done with the the last thing. Right. Um, what I'm saying on these is just hold tight, kick back. I will post a completed version on this one. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, how this works into the equations from yesterday is if you calculated um, if you calculated the two, well, like this, the ball is thrown in the air. If it's traveling at two meters per second, how much potential energy will it have at the top? Here's the way it works. So you can calculate one of them because that's what we were doing yesterday. Well, a lot of you can, I know. Um, so if you want to find the kinetic energy of the ball, it was one half times the mass, which was 16 kilograms, times the velocity squared, which is two meters a second squared. So you've got one half times 16 times four. Uh, what's eight times four? 32. That should be 32 joules. Now what that says, though, this conservation of energy says that this, the Ke, is going to equal the Pe. So if the Ke is 32 joules, what will be the Pe at the top of the path? It should be the same. It should be the 32 joules. So if you've got your person here and they throw a ball and it goes like that, right? And we're talking about this is the line. If it has 32 joules of Ke at the bottom, when it gets to the top, let's say through it straight up, that would be better because it's going to have some horizontal velocity. And that's a parabolic problem in physics, which is awesome. And someday you'll do that, but we do not have the time in this class to do those. Although they are kind of fun. Okay, so it's a ball that gets thrown straight up. So initially, the Ke, if it has 32 joules there, it's going to have 32 joules of potential when it comes to a stop way up in the sky, right? That's what that conservation of energy means. So if we look at Ke, um, let's do a highlighter here. Ke, right, is 32 joules of Ke, 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 Ke. Um, it's got the same Pe. Let's do uh, that one. That looks like a great one. Um, so PE, 32 joules, 32 joules, because of the conservation of energy. You don't have to calculate it. You just know what's there. Now, is a little bit going to be lost to thermal? Yeah, it's probably 32 joules at the bottom, 30 joules at the top of potential, and two lost to dissipated. Eh, we're not going to get that picky in this class. Physics, you get that picky. I just want you to get the concept. So when you get there, you're like, oh, yeah. I remember Wilkinson yelling at us through a screen one time about that. Then you're good, right? Then I've done my job and you've done yours. All right, it's the same kind of thing here. If a ball is on a ledge, okay, ball, four kilogram ball on a ledge. Okay, get to be drawer again. So if we go here, here, you've got your ledge. Uh, there's a ball on a ledge and it's got, what's the height here? It says the height is five meters. Um, it's a four kilogram ball. Find the PE. Can we do that? We sure can because mass is four kilograms. Height is five meters. Gravity is always 9.8 meters a second second. Okay, what's it going to be? 20 times 10 is 200. So that's going to be a little less than 200. Uh, 20 times that is nine, uh, 196. Yeah, do I have to double check that? I think it's 196. Okay, so up here, it's got a PE of 196. Yay. Now, when that falls off the edge, at the bottom, it's moving, right? It's moving fast. You know the, ki the kinetic energy because the potential turned into the kinetic. So if it has, if it has 196, a PE at the top, 
it has 196 of Ke at the bottom. Eh, good, yeah, makes sense. So it doesn't matter what numbers we throw there. Um, you just know the other one. I suppose we could do the same thing here, right? Like it doesn't matter what they are. You've got a ball, now this, oh, it's a rock. Well, for gosh sakes, it's a rock. Well, that makes all the difference in the world. It's a rock. And it's a three kilogram rock uh, with a height of 0.8 meters, right? So again, you know the MGH, mass is three kilograms, gravity is 9.8, height is 0.8 meters. You can crank through that pretty quick. You're gonna have to maybe cheat on that one and actually type it in. I'm not doing it in my head. Three times 9.8 times 0.8 is 23.5. Again, you know that the Ke, just before it hits at the bottom, has to be the same. That's all I'm getting at. It should match. It should be the same. 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 That's the part you need.